In this lecture, we have a look at the McNamar test. The McNamar test is the corresponding chi-square test for paired data. The test is used on categorical data with only two categories, and where a treatment is paired with a control group, or when we have matched pairs. For example, suppose that we want to study the effect of drugs A and B for treating pain. We recruit 400 individuals with pain and make 200 pairs of these individuals where we pair them based on similar pain score, gender and age. We then randomly assign drug A to one of the individuals in the pairs and drug B to the other persons in the pairs. After the treatment, we collect the following data on the pairs. Note that we have 200 pairs in total and that the counts in this table represent the number of pairs, not the number of individuals. This cell in the table tells us that we have in total 90 pairs that still had pain after the treatment. This means that both individuals in these 90 pairs still had pain after treatment with either drug A or B. For example, this pair could be one of these 90 pairs where both individuals still have pain. This cell in the table tells us that we have in total 70 pairs that had no pain after the treatment. Both individuals in these pairs therefore had no pain after using either drug A or B. For example, this pair could represent one of those 70 pairs where both individuals did not have pain after the treatment. These two cells therefore represent an agreement between the two drugs. However, in 30 pairs, the ones on drug B had no pain, whereas the ones on drug A still had pain. This group therefore consists of 30 individuals on drug B that had no pain after the treatment, and 30 individuals that still had pain after treatment with drug A. For example, this pair could be one of those 30 pairs, where the person on drug B did not have any pain, whereas the person on drug A still had pain. In contrast, 10 pairs included 10 individuals on drug B that still had pain, and 10 individuals on drug A that had no pain. For example, this pair could represent one of these 10 pairs, where the person on drug B still had pain whereas the person on drug A had no pain. The most interesting part in this table is the cells with the pairs where the two drugs result in a different outcome. In total, we have 40 pairs where the two drugs result in different outcomes. Drug B seems to be better than drug A because in 10 of the pairs, drug A had an effect whereas drug B did not have an effect. And in 30 pairs, Drug B had an effect, whereas drug A did not have an effect. Therefore, more individuals respond to drug B compared to drug A in the pairs. The formula of the McNamara test shows that it is only based on the pairs where there is a disagreement between the two treatments, where B represents the value in cell B, and C represents the value in cell C. The null hypothesis of this test states that the population proportion of the cells B and C in the table should be equal, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that they are not equal. We now plug in the corresponding frequencies in the cells B and C. If we do the math, we see that the chi-square test statistic is equal to 10. The area to the right hand side of 10 in a chi-square distribution with 1 degree of freedom is equal to about 0 0.0016. This area represents the p-value of the test. Since the p-value 0 0.0016 is less than the general significance level of 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a significant difference in proportions between cell B and C. There are more individuals in the pairs who respond to drug B compared to drug A. This was the end of this lecture about the McNamara test. Thanks for watching.